The PBA Tour is here in Windsor Locks, Connecticut, where the region's been shut down by a brutal two-day blizzard. But our tour stops for nothing or no one. Isn't that right, Dave Ryan? Right you are, Randy. The PBA Tour is live on the SPR 5. Finalists are ready to roll. First from Claremont, Florida. Second ranked bowler in the world through two 300 games this week. Yeah. From Ann Arbor, Michigan, by way of top man, Finland, Mika Koi Dunemi. The owner of five career PBA titles, he finished third to help you earlier this season from Las Vegas, Nevada. Superstars of the PBA Tour in the wild card match. Mika Koivunemi against this guy from Claremont, Florida, near Orlando. 11 time titleist, one of four lefties. <laughs> 6 10 for him off the first shot of the day. Something that we'll see all day long because of the lane conditions this week. The lanes are very dry towards the outside part of the lane. Players look for friction to get the ball to make its turn to the pocket. Perfect multi-pin conversion number so far for Couch. <laughs> Turns away and immediately he had converted. And he stays perfect in that department this week. He got Koivu Nemi. Turns to the show, third time this year. Kansas City, a runner-up. Chicago, runner-up. Now he's in Hartford with a chance to win his first title of the year. He sits squarely on the bubble of the Tournament of Champions. He'll make a quick adjustment with his shoes. Sounds like my shoe. Telling Kirk Von Kruger, our tournament director, something is on the shoe. We have synthetic approaches, synthetic lanes here. They're only a year old, Bradley. So who is the man in the bubble? That's him right there, Mika Koivunem. And he told us last night, Randy, he relishes the opportunity to have control, to have control of his destiny at this moment. There's only two players that can knock him out in this tournament. That's Eric Forkel and Peter Hernandez. Obviously, the best way to take care of business for Mika is to win this week. Shoe problem repaired. <laughs> And all that power, two 300 games for Mika Korunemi this week. He was blistering at the pins, Randy, last night in the round of eight when these two matched up. You see this real high strike percentage, almost 75%. In match play, Mika Korunemi averaged 250. Interesting to see how it will develop as the lone right-hander in our five-man championship field today. I think 
He's got the advantage. I think you're right. He can dictate that path to the pocket. Slow you start on lane 11. That stays red hot. Leaf guys, we mentioned from Finland. We'll hear several reactions in his native language that we'll try to translate for you. First arrow out to about the second board. Friction there. You get it there at the right time with the right speed in the right hand. The only thing you have to worry about is carry. But I think you're right, Dave Ryan. Four left-handers on their side of the lane, something that they're not going to be used to today. The lane's changing drastically. Carry is going to be critical. Couch is dialed in on that lane as he gets his first strike. Match play so far this week, 11-7 record with a 241.86 average. Boy, with all those pins, he qualified as the top man through the 18 games of qualifying as the loser in the round of eight, so he is the wild card today. There have been five wild card winners, starting from this difficult spot, going all the way through and winning the championship. Last time it happened, Chris Barnes, Dallas, this year. Make your statement, Randy. Jason Couch is starting on the 10th board, drifts a little bit to the right, Throwing it right around the second or third board. Those dots are to help the viewers at home watch where our four left-handers will be playing the lanes this week, where they're standing, and also where they're playing down the lane. Turkey to begin things for Mika Koibunemi, who last night was unbelievable in the round of eight. He just seemed so dialed in. We were standing behind him to the side, watching what adjustments he was making, and he was guessing right as the oil broke down in his best of seven. It was a seven-gamer in the round of eight with Jason Couch. Yeah, and the only three games that Jason won, he had to perform in the 10th frame. In game four, Jason Couch needed all three strikes in the 10th just to beat Mika by one pin. In that round of eight, Mika did have his second 300 game of this tournament last night. Try to keep it going for four hundred. Oh yeah! Four in a row. A good shot. Huva Hito in finish. That ball's dead flush perfect. When it's coming in at that angle, with that kind of speed and that kind of power, nothing's going to stand up. Mika Koivu Nemi is focused. He's worked a lot on that in the offseason along with his training. Lefties and righties, TV final average. Lefties are way down. If you talk to Eric Cork, who was also on our show today, he's going to make a statement. That's what Jason Couch said a moment ago. Eric wants to do the same thing for Southpaws today. <laughs> Jason's doing his best. Good start for each. I guarantee you that that average that you just saw is going to go up dramatically today. If you have not logged on to PBA.com and followed this event all week, and many of our hardcore bowling fans do, Randy, the scoring has been through the roof. We've come close to setting a record for 300 games in one event. 18 this week, the most since 99. We may well see one today. Maybe more, you never know. Oil has been cooperative on pattern ease. We'll break down. Yeah. Yeah. See what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it sure is. And we threw a lot of them this week. I averaged 234 for the 18-game qualifier. Finished 34th. Didn't even make it into the round of 32. A lot of strikes thrown. Easy to get to the pocket, as you can see, for the season, almost 11 points higher for the tournament. And this is a guy that's been throwing a lot of strikes all season. Mika's fourth on the tour in strike percentage for the number you just saw, 64.42. Oh, Front five, and a 10-pin lead. Mika Korbunemi, whose daughter Ida is watching back home. She's 10 years old. Listen to the loft here. Watch the ball hit the lane. Big lock in the right lane. Other daughter, Lydia, has a birthday party going on today near Ann Arbor to Bowling Center. And her 
having a bowling party of as we speak, they're watching. She just turned three years old on Thursday. The whole family rooting on the Another strike. Six pounder. Nika Koyunemi. What a start. Over Jason Couch by 20 pins. And we return to tell you why the oil has been so cooperative on pattern E. The scores have been blistering and wins are lost. We're coming live from just outside Hartford, Connecticut. Today's exclusive live coverage of the PBA Cambridge Credit Classic is brought to you by Cambridge Credit Counseling. Log on to nodebt.com and find out how good it feels to be debt free. By GEICO, a 15 minute phone call could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by Dexter, bowling, golf and casual, we have the right shoe for you. Scorching the lanes at Bradley Ball. <laughs> Everyone enthusiastic about bowling back in the Hartford area. Welcome back, Dave Ryan, Randy Peterson, our entire ESPN PBA crew. Incredible numbers, record setting en route to perhaps a 300 game with Mika Koivunem, who has the front six. Why has the bowling been so successful and can it continue today? Well, I think it can, and the reason why is the lane conditions, plain and simple. We had our highest scoring tournament since the conception of the new format this week and almost as many 300s this week as we've had all year long. And the reason why, lane conditions. Pattern E, the light blue oil, the light blue boards is the oil, the dark blue is the dry. You can see the dry to the outside part of the lane. The players use the friction to get the ball to turn into the pocket, plain and simple. Four lefties on the left side, only one right-hander, maybe D'Amica's advantage. The key this week, however, was simple. Carry the corner pins, pull big scores. And carry they have. PBA Hall of Famer Pete Weber will be featured on ESPN.com web chat this Wednesday. You can leave your questions for Pete by going to the tour's official website at PBA.com and then clicking on the link at the bottom of the home page. You can also leave questions for Pete at ESPN.com, keyword Pete Weber. Numbers to look at. Down 20 is Jason Couch trying to derail the Mika train. Who has a six bagger to start. What a beginning for Koi Bunemi. Responds with some help on the seven pin. Here's the deal. Jason Couch only has one miss. He's got five in a row. He's got a possibility of 290. You see the ball going to the outside part of the lane. Look at it peel off the edge of the gutter. Now, if Mika were to win or were to miss one time before the tenth frame, he'd actually lose because the best Mika could do then is 279. But right now, Mika is perfect through six. Jason Couch. If he strikes out, can shoot 290. Jason Couch has already locked up his spot on the All Exempt Tour next year. His goal is to become player of the year. Seven pin, no help from either messenger, but he knows it was a good ball. Ball comes in just a pinch light. The head pin doesn't make it across. He knows that was a big hit too because now the best Jason can do is 269. <laughs> Takes care of the mark. All the bowlers on our tour gunning for the all exempt tour next year. And to get there, you've got to be in the top 50. One way to clinch it is to be up in points. And Patrick Allen, we'll see later today on our show, has been scorching hot. Mika Koivunemi not far behind him. Mika told us last night with 25,000 points in the line today for the winner that pretty much when he made his second show early in the year, hey, I've wrapped up next season. But he wants to get a victory and get himself into the TLC field. That's how you do it. Seven in a row. Folks, our title sponsor this week, Cambridge Credit Counseling, announcing a bonus of $10,000 to the first player on TV to start a match with nine strikes in a row. Mika's got seven. If that player goes on a roll at 300 game, the bonus will be doubled for a total of $20,000. Bonus starts this week. will be available each week for the rest of the season. Thanks to the fine folks at Cambridge Credit Counseling for the Cambridge Credit Challenge. Looks for a break. 
You heard him yell, Lade! That means carry and finish. And carry it did, perfection. Through eight frames, one strike away from a $10,000 bonus, four strikes away from perfection. 20,000 from Cambridge, 10,000 from the PBA. Big time money in one game. Carry now, translated as Latte Nut. It's all working for Mika. Is right behind him. Let them work. If Jason Couch strikes at, out, he'll shoot 269. If Mika goes nine spare, nine spare, ninth and tenth, Mika would actually lose. The last time we had a commander on TV, Randy, you and I saw it in Tacoma, Washington, January 5th of this year. It was Norm Duke against Walter Ray Williams Jr. Oh, yeah. In an arena setting, the 15th televised PBA 300 game and the hug for Normie, who has not been feeling well. We're glad to hear that he's recovering from the surgery. Yeah, he's still having shoulder problems. Normie, get well soon. Did not bowl this week. Still suffering. Pitchner. is on. These two know each other well, folks. Last night, plenty of emotion between them as well in the round of eight. Jason Couch trying to get in Mika's head, telling him to keep striking, this ain't over. And he's right, it's not. First time in Mika's career he's had two 300 games in one tournament. Now, on the verge of a third. This is for $10,000 from Craig Cambridge. <laughs> Randy, we could see this coming last night. He was so locked in in that round of eight match. Right. Every ball was right in the pocket. He wasn't missing. Quite simply was not missing his path to the pocket. It wasn't high, it wasn't light. He was right there. Yeah, you get some breaks, but he has not needed breaks in this game. Well, when you throw a dead flush like that every ball, the only thing that could possibly stand up is solid eight or nine. Mika taking a re-rack, gaining his composure, deep breath. Three shots in the tenth for perfection. In any language, he is locked into the pocket without question. The for it to hook right about there. Watch the six go to the sidewall. Caves the 10 in. What a birthday party this is about to be back home in Michigan. Wife Lena, daughters Ida and Lydia are celebrating Lida's third birthday. Daddy can buy some unbelievable Christmas presents now. Already has a $10,000 bonus. who has never appeared on TV before. <laughs> Not much, Jason. Not much to do with the way Mika has been bowling. Major Mika builds toward the most major moment his PBA career. Single ball, Randy, was right on the 
money. Take a look. Watch that ball just frozen rope itself right into the one three. Watch those eyes. He knows it's good. Jason Couch enjoying a light moment, steamroll by <laughs> <laughs> He's going to have to play the role of just wiping the brow for now. And he'll sit back and watch. Interesting to see how Mika responds hey, after the emotion. Hey. <laughs> a 300 game in his first match as a semifinalist now. That's next against Peter Hernandez. Speaking back home to his family and in Harvard. Unbelievable week just outside Hartford. Patrick Allen, you've overcome the chicken pox. We're glad to see you back on tour, first of all. A 300 game for Mika. What's it like to watch that and note the oil is very cooperative? You had two yourself. Can you repeat the feat, maybe roll 300 here? Well, it's like Mohegan Sun. You just got to roll the dice and hope they come up right. Uh, <laughs> it's a pretty easy scoring condition. Uh, a lot of strikes this week, a lot of 300. So take a one shot at a time and you never know. Good luck to you. Thanks. We'll see how he overcomes those chicken pox, Randy. He wasn't feeling well until just about a week ago. Yeah, well, he was feeling, uh, he was feeling dandy this week because all he did was lead the qualifier by a bunch. Patrick Allen qualified number one after 18 games. He struck like nobody's business. See if he can continue it today. <laughs> Not a good start for Eric Forkel. Cuts right through the heart, leaving the 6 7 10. On lane 11, we're glad to be joined here in the booth by Mika Koivunevi. Congratulations on the 300 game. How in the world do you regroup now for your next match and overcome the emotion of that 300? Uh, I just try to get my focus back. So I got a couple, couple of, couple, couple of uh, practice shots in the practice pair. Right to find my Trying to kick it across the deck. We're joined by Mika Kovunem. And Mika, here's another look at the last strike you had to get for your 300 game and the big, big money, which you earned. What was going through your mind as you released the ball? Uh, I felt really good. I get in right into line and how I won it. So I was pretty sure I got a strike. Looks like perfect strike. Sure was. Patrick Allen, speaking of perfect, couple 300 games. For him, here's our baby with real deal matchup, Randy. Big difference here is simple. Patrick Allen, almost 10 pins a game higher average than Eric Forkel. Again, I talked about what he did in qualifying. The first round, nine games. The second round, nine games. He was dominating the field this week. The number one qualifier. Number one on the tour of points, and he's been blistering the field of late and continues that. So, Mika, we watched you last night in the round of eight in your matchup with Jason Couch where you were just locked into the pocket. Do you have a feeling coming into today that 300 was possible for you? Uh, I didn't think about it, but the scoring base has been really high this week, so it's always a chance to do that, but I, I didn't expect to do that. We know your family's watching back home near Ann Arbor. That's a special birthday party going on for your little yeah, girl. I, 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 <laughs> I like to say happy birthday, my She's having a birthday party in the building area right now. Very exciting tonight. Mika, thanks so much for joining us. We're going to let you get yourself mentally focused for your next match against Peter Hernandez. Semifinals that's coming up. Second show of the year for Eric Forkel. We saw him in Philly where he beat Parker Bowen the third, but struggled against Danny Wiseman. And open frame in the first frame, and if you're going to do that, the best place to do it is in frame one. Because if he strikes out, he still has a possibility of 279. Oh, 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 oh. Calls himself a classic stylist, somewhere in between the power and finesse player. 
But he's the first to admit he's an old school type bowler with his approach. And what, no matter what anyone says on the website, <laughs> because people have, on chat rooms, you see the single pin numbers, have talked about his sunglasses. He says they're staying on. He's <laughs> comfortable on TV with the glasses, so leave him alone. We bowled pretty, we <laughs> pretty good a couple weeks ago on the show. Right now struggling on the left lane early. He looks like he's dialed in. PA, by the way, we saw those numbers. The round is 64, which is the second nine game, nine games of qualifying. He started with 300 and ended with 300. Waiting for his third. Sometime today. Looks for the turkey ball to begin this match. Has three in a row. Well, Jason Couch lost in the wild card. But next week, he returns to Uncasville, Connecticut. Last year, that's where Jason won his third straight tournament of champions title. The Dexter Tournament of Champions is coming your way next Sunday, 1 o'clock Eastern, as Couch goes for four in a row. Here we're at Windsor Locks, Connecticut. Cambridge Credit Classic just outside Hartford. In fact, literally seconds away from Bradley International Airport. We're right off one of the runways. Not far. Live coverage continues on the Tour. Look out. Eight pin wiggles and stays up for PA. Talked about it before. The one thing that the players had to control is carry. And when you're going high flush like that, with that much friction, that much drive, that much power on a bowling ball, bowling ball goes right by the eight pin. Patrick Allen still with a commanding lead. If he converts here, he'll lead by 30. Tries to stay perfect, single pin conversions. He'll do that, and he's been dialed in without question. Pretty amazing story with his chicken pox where he didn't feel well after winning in Philadelphia. Eric Thorkel was on that show. Now down 30 pins is Thorkel. To get this far, that's what has happened to Eric. 12 and six match play record over a 237 average. Last night to us, really defending the thought process bowling fans have about lefties. Oh. In the pocket there, Randy, do you agree that sometimes there's a certain stigma up attached to lefties? Well, I think there is, and I, and I think it's uh, a lot of it's unfair. You know, for years out here on the tour, if the, if the lefties bowled well, it was because the lanes were easy. And if they bowled bad, it's because they weren't any good. And, and unfortunately, um, I don't think it's as, as bad as it used to be. And I think that if anybody that's watching the tour knows anything about bowling, you can just watch these guys and tell, you know, and make the decision yourself. These guys obviously are great, great players. And uh, I think that all that other nonsense needs to go away. Solid seven there for Foracle. Born and raised in Southern California and now lives in Las Vegas. Look at the Southpaw supremacy we've had. But see, here's the deal though. This week, the lanes were the same, both left and right. But there's more right-handers, so the right side of the lane's gonna break down faster. The righties are gonna have to make some more, they're gonna have to make moves, more drastic moves. Whereas on the left side, they can pretty much stay in the same zone. If that's being, if that being the case, what do you think's gonna happen on the left side? The lefties are gonna dominate. They're gonna run you over. It's just, it's just simple. I mean, the right side of the lane breaks down faster than the left. Who is adjusting well amongst the four lefties? Little chance for Couch after being just crushed by Mika, but PA is in the zone. Yes, he is, but now here we have the exact opposite of what I was just talking about. Four left-handers, one right-hander. The lefties are gonna experience a lot more breakdown than Mika is. Looking for help across the deck for the seven. It stays up. Finish up his chicken pox story. Didn't feel well. Thinks he might have contracted it in the Pro-Am in Philadelphia. And then things got worse for him the next week at Albany. Thought he maybe had some hives, some kind of rash. Went to the doctor who asked him promptly, have you ever had chicken pox, Patrick? He said, no. Doctor said, you do now. <laughs> yeah. Quarantined, he stayed with his sister Sheila in Peekskill, New York, it's upstate. Not far from Patrick's hometown of Terrytown in Westchester County. Sheila's here on the right, along with PA's family. 
Sheila never had chicken pox either, so Patrick was concerned she would get it. And was locked right. in the room, basically, as Patrick's dad and stepmom watched closely as well. Yeah, if you go to the doctor and, and you have all these little red spots on your face and, and the doctor says it's not a real, a real bad case of acne, probably not a good thing. Can be dangerous to get it that late in life. He's 33 years old. Oh, yeah. Came through it just fine. Eric. Someone from the stands called him Eric. <laughs> Are you ready? And he said, wait a minute. Don't cheer for Eric when I'm throwing the ball down there as the match wins this week for PA. All lefties in match play, by the way, three out of three. So he's taking out his fourth straight lefty. That's the fan who was yelling for Eric. That, that's no fan. No, that's a hat. <laughs> well, fan comes from the word fanatic, right? That's oh. got to be it. In the pocket is Patrick Allen with a 29 pin lead. Looking very good in this semifinal matchup. Trying to get himself to the next round. We've already had one 300 game with Mika Koryunemi. Much more to come from Hartford when we return. Mika Koryunemi certainly was a king of the lanes already today with his perfect 300 game. 16th ever on TV, PBA history. $30,000 already in Mika's pockets. Patrick Allen can't join him with a 300 here, but he's got a big lead. 29 pins. Bell lefty Eric Fulke looks for Skinner and has that to deal with. <laughs> 7, 6, 10. Yikes. Well, we're having a little trouble. The uh, sweep swept off the 6, 7, 10. Gives us time to check in with this week's Days In on the road. PBA Dexter Tournament Champion just down the road from here in Hartford to Uncasville in the Mohegan Sun Casino and Resort. We can't wait for that one. Tickets are available. Great seats right behind the lanes are available, folks. So log on to PBA.com to snatch those up and get yourself to Uncasville. Also, Remind you about January 11th, our show to begin the next season. Tickets available for that as well on PBA.com. In Tacoma, regionals, South Carolina, Nevada, and Bowling Green, Ohio. All coming. Pins are back up. Burkle cannot convert the difficult split. And an open frame pretty much does him in. Six frames in, Patrick Allen has got a huge lead. Well, it gets close, but same split he left in the first frame. And right now, I think it's two things for Eric Burkle. One, he's not lined up properly. Two. Bad choice of equipment. Maybe needs to use a weaker ball and go straighter. That ball looks like it's breaking loose down the lane. Still a very good week for him. This will be 75 straight tournaments as he leaves the 247 up. 75 in a row without a win for him. His last victory, the New York City PBA Experience outdoor event in Manhattan back in 99. Eric, like many lefties, Randy, wears a brace on the left hand. However, we don't see that from Patrick Allen and Jason Couch. Why is that? Well, Eric Forkel, Mike Scroggins, you'll see with Peter Hernandez, they go much straighter. They want to keep their wrists solid in one spot. They don't want it moving around, where as Jason Couch and Patrick Allen like the freedom of movement so they can create a higher rep rate, they can lower their rep rate, they can do a lot more things. They can be a little more versatile. Eric told us last night that he started wearing the glove and that Brace just before Philadelphia made that show, beat Parker Bone the third, then lost eventually to Wiseman. But he was quick to remind us, hey, that's not the reason I've had great success because he didn't do well in Albany or Long Island, but he's right back on the show this week and appears to be dominated today by PA. PA's playing the lanes the right way. He's further right, going around the, the lane condition a little bit more. Eric Forkel's still trying to go too straight. Why not change if Eric Forkel? You can see the success oh, oh, that Couch and Kara oh, had. Oh, 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 That's a good question. Eric Forkel's A game is going straight. Patrick Allen's A game is hooking it. Ready tonight. Hard running Stephen Davis leading the division leading Carolina Panthers against Atlanta. And Michael Vick is back in the starting lineup. He actually played last week in their game against the Houston Texans with 8 for 11, 60 yards. 
Carolina one and seven in their last eight at the Georgia Dome, and they've got a five-game losing streak to deal with. Falcons have not won at home this year. Something's got to break in that game. It all starts tonight, 7.30 Eastern with NFL Primetime presented by Miller Lite. Yeah, and if you look up excitement in the dictionary, there's a picture of Michael Vick. Mm. First start of the season for Mike or Michael. Either way, he's fun to watch. He yeah, has been fun to watch today as well. He keeps it going. That's all that ended Eric Forkel's day. 63 pin lead now for Patrick Allen. But Dave, I think you hit it right on the head. Why wouldn't Eric try to do what Patrick's doing? Last night, Eric told us that he's started changing, fiddling around with his starting position so that he could spin it a little more. Keep in mind, folks, we have four lefties on the show, so the left approach to the pocket is going to break down. There'll have to be adjustments. But as you mentioned, Patrick Allen and Couch took the right approach. Now, Couch was in the first match of the day. Yeah, he bowled a great game. He shot 249. He ran into a steamroller. When Mika, I mean, there's not a whole lot you can do when a guy shoots three bills at you. But again, Eric Forkel will actually go much straighter. When the lanes start to break down, in my opinion, it favors the guy that the guys that hook it more. Looks for an old foundation frame. Goal has that. That is so far behind. <laughs> Not going to make a difference against the red hot Patrick Allen. Last year ranked 15th in the PBA Tour in points. Now, as we mentioned, number one. He has been red hot. He's made the title match in three of the five TV shows he's been on. on Trying to make it four six. He's to the next for sure. Looking for some help on the seven pin. Here's my cell ball. <laughs> <laughs> this ball goes out to about the third board, comes in a little light, and the messenger's spinning like a top as it gets airborne. We must have a name for that with a pin. Head over breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> the, hel the helicopter. Helicopter be going this way. That's though. right. So yeah, that that's actually was top to bottom. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> He's wrapped it up. Wow, it made it look easy too. It's impressive to me. Six shows in his career, four times in the final at least. First head-to-head -head matchup on TV with Forkel. He's about to go 1-0 against him. Either Mika or Hernandez will be his opponent in the finals. Patrick Allen with a sparrow being the 230s. Best Eric Forkel can do is 205. Watch the show. Another great week for Eric Forkel. Shows that even when they're high scoring, even though he's old school, he can still compete and keep up with the young guys. Forkel leads the tour coming into this TV show in spare percentage, ninth in strike percentage. And he's now 27th on tour, Randy, in the points list. So he's got a good shot. Even if he doesn't win, he'll not be in the Dexter Tournament of Champions. A chance to go back to Vegas, uh, maybe bowl some regionals. As a lot of the guys are, told us last night, last couple days, in the holiday break, if they're not in the TOC, they've got a good chunk of time off, about a month. Yep, uh, about three weeks to a month. Yep. It's regional time and practice and really needed practice time. Plenty of time with families as well. Eric's daughters, Heather and Erica watching today back home in Southern California for them. Not much Forkel could do today against the red-hot Patrick Allen. But we'll not have a repeat winner week to week because Patrick Haley Jr. won on the island last week. Different five and the show this week. But perhaps Patrick Allen could become the first two-time winner on tour this season with a victory. He is to the final. Second time this year, he won in Philadelphia earlier this season. Hernandez, perhaps an opponent, or Koibu Nemi. When we return, more about Pete Weber. I don't care if your name's Pete Weber or Joe Blow. It just doesn't matter. You're, you get nervous.
Today's exclusive live coverage of the PBA Cambridge Credit Classic is brought to you by Bayer Aspirin. Take it for pain, take it for life. By new Odor Eaters Plus, the only art supporting insole that protects against odor and wetness. And by Miller High Live to live simply, proudly, boldly, manly. This is the High Live. Big Wizard, no problem. The PBA rolls on. Welcome back to the Cambridge Credit Classic in Windsor Lost, Connecticut. Bradley Bowl has been the site of several bowlers' first career wins, including Pete Weber. We go back to 1982 in this week's Miller Milestone. That's everybody's dream is to is to get up and throw a double in the tenth frame. And I got up and I struck in the ninth, tenth, eleventh to shoot two ten. And I know he had to get up and throw a double in the tenth frame. And his first shot, he went light and left a little mixer seven pin. And I remember the tears coming. I remember the the thrill of victory. Um, I remember the high I got off of it. Um, I knew it got me into the Tournament of Champions, which that was everybody's goal to get in the Tournament of Champions. Dad had the ear-to-ear -ear grin and told me how proud of me he was, and that that's just the first of many to come, and went on, and I guess he was right. I always knew I was gonna win, eventually down the line. 29 times I didn't know about, but I, I knew eventually I was gonna win one. After I got back to the room and actually took the deep breath, and whew, I think I'm done with that. Uh, I think it really sunk in. I think the tears came a little bit more. Uh, I don't care how long you're out on tour, as many times as you've been on TV, how many titles you won. You need a double in the tenth frame, you get nervous. BDW is subject to this week's Miller. Highlight, Miles Miller. Peter Hernandez, first career TV appearance in his 20th career event. Can he make it? We'll find out. We had a total of 20, 300 games on tour as the Western New England College Bowling Team mascot, the Golden Bear, is here. And we have won already our 19th of this tournament. Patrick Allen into the finals. Hernandez, Corbu, Nemi next up. Can Mika throw another 300 game, Randy? Well, I don't know. Let's ask him. Mika, perfection. You have a game to reflect back on your 300. How do you feel now? I feel quite confident. I could still could look there. I might leave a couple of 10 pins, but I hope I carry those. Do you have anything left in the tank going against Peter Hernandez? I have a lot of time. I haven't done my mission this week yet. It's on a mission, Dave Ryan. It's kind of a good news, bad news for Peter Hernandez, however. The good news, seven players have won their first title here at Bradley Bowl. The bad news, Mika Koibuniemi has yet to lose to a left-hander. And yet to use his spare ball, Randy, at all. 300 game to begin this TV show. We had three 300s last week on Long Island. 19 this week, the most since the 1999 flagship open. All kinds of history, huge scores. Stay, stay tuned, locked in. Peter Hernandez, TV debut. The South Floridian from very near Randy's home, just outside Miami. And during the break, I was watching Peter warming up, and he looks like he has a really good ball reaction. Can it be possibly as good as Mika's? Coming off the perfect game. How much gas in Corbunemi's tank? He told Randy he's ready to go. <laughs> Looks pretty good. He's still right in the pocket. Which sets up our baby roof real deal matchup, Randy. Well, the strike percentage very high for Peter Hernandez. But look at for Mika. Wonder why he shot 300. Look at that. 76% of the time he scored strikes in his first game, it was 100%. Lost to Norm Duke, but lost to Brian Himmler this year in finals. Going for 14 in a row is Mika, who told us last night about that mission he mentioned with you. To win, get himself off the bubble. Get himself for this year. 14 strikes in a row as he stays sizzling hot. Everything lining up perfectly, Randy, for him. Playing outside line around first arrow. He's a big, tall man with that loft. One thing about Mika Koivuniemi, if he can play the outside part of the lane, he is almost unbeatable. And you just kind of had a feeling this week that it was shaping up for Mika. Somebody asked him, how do you like the weather? He says, it reminds me of home. They said Ann Arbor. He goes, no. Oh, yeah. 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 
well, look out, tough break. Like the ball, however, Shot. he's got the 7 6 10, really difficult split. Same trouble that Eric Forkel had, and the same split 6 7 10. It is 30 minutes north of Key Largo in Cutler Ridge, Florida, near Homestead. Been hearing it from friends and family since he made the show. The phone is ringing off the hook, tries to kick the six and 10 across the deck to take out the seven. So an open frame for Hernandez with an average of 242.11 this week in match play, 12 and five record. Got by Tony Reyes last night. Tony's so emotional in that round of eight loss. Been knocking on the door the last couple weeks. Sure has. Finished uh, sixth, two weeks in a row. So far left in his path to the pocket. Nice ball for Hernandez. 37 years old, just a second year on tour. He and his brother working on an office supply business back home. Adolfo Hernandez. It's his brother back home. All the family's watching today. Comes high and the streak is over. With so much loft, he was bound to misfire after 14 straight. You see that friction to the right part of the lane, the right side part of the lane. If you get it there too early, instead of going in, it overhooks, and that's exactly what happened there. Overhooks when it reaches the end of that oil, so the friction reacts right through the nose. Way high. Multiple conversion number stays perfect for Mika. Gordon Emmy, who interestingly enough, Randy, was practicing that with his spare ball. Like <laughs> you know, you got to shoot one once in a while, Meek. He's practicing prior to coming back from commercial break in your interview with him, using the spare ball. He didn't need it in his first game. Right, but it's, it was a great idea because you know what? Chances are he's not going to throw 24 in a row. He hasn't shot a spare in a while. So the one thing about Mika, he's smart. He's always thinking, and he's got a game plan. No wins in his last 38 events, dating back to his second title, the U.S. Open in 2001. Oh, yeah. Right in the pocket upon release with all that loft, you can see it. Today, join host Justin Timberlake for a look back at an amazing year of athletic achievements. Don't miss the Thrill of Victory 2003 presented by Bank of America. ABC Sports Year Review. That's today, 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 in the West Coast on ABC Sports Championship Television. Buckeyes will not be winning a national championship. Who's going to be in the title game now? After what happened last time. Six pin for Hernandez. Right now, what's happening with Peter Hernandez, same thing happened to Eric Forkel, is they're seeing transition that we normally see on the right side of the lane, and it's caused by where Jason Couch and Patrick Allen were playing the lanes. They were much further right, throwing to that same spot, and they dried the front part of the lane up. Covers up an average mark. His wife, Jennifer, better known as Gen Z, is watching back home in South Florida. The daughters, Evelyn and Denise, 16 and 13, are tuned in to dad. And his first career TV appearance. It was exciting just being next to him last night. The phone kept ringing. Excuse <laughs> me, guys. Sorry. Take another congratulatory call. He needed a secretary last night. <laughs> Boy, a lot of different levels. But side of the PBA Tours for him. Got some help there. Had heard rumblings there would be an all-exempt tour. Basically wanted to give it two years to see if he could make it. And this one here is perfect. Gets it outside to the dry area part of the lane. Friction's created. His hand being behind it controls the directional change down the lane. Strike here, he's up 29 pins. Pressure of another 300 game from the off his shoulders. He responds. Late trip on the seven. Mika's got a lot of things going his way right now. He's got 30 extra thousand dollars in his pocket, not counting where he finishes this week. He's got plenty of points to secure himself a spot on the roster. Roster for next year's all-exempt tour. The only thing he doesn't have is a secure spot 
in the Tournament of Champions. He can solidify his place by beating Peter Hernandez this game. Strike here. Gives him a turkey ball, 39 pin lead. On lane 11. <laughs> On it means carry in finish, and it does just that. Cuba Hito means good shot. All those things work well for Sushan Corbu Nemi. The big fin has the lead against Peter Hernandez, bidding for his first tour title since 2001. If you missed it, you missed some history earlier today. Nico oh, Corbu Nemi. Oh, Sixteenth ever on TV, and now Mika walked up with Peter Hernandez, bidding for the finals against Patrick Allen. Four left-handers made today's show the most since the 2001 Tar Heel Open. They made throw from the same side, but Jason Couch, Peter Hernandez played the lane very differently. Randy explains in today's Dexter. He had two completely different games. Peter Hernandez, more traditional, notice how his fingers are more up the back of the ball. So his roll is going to be tighter, more end over end. Look at the white piece of tape rotating in a much straighter direction. Now watch the change down the lane. It's a subtle move in the back part of the lane. Now look at Jason Couch, big power player, high rep player. Look at his hand rotating around the side. Look how much further right he is on the approach to allow for that big hook. You can see the tape spinning in this type of direction. Now watch how far left his ball goes and look at the back of the pocket. Bottom line, control down lane direction with directional change, but what you do with your hand at release. This week's Dexter approach will keep a close eye with Peter Hernandez, the lefty in this match, and Patrick Allen to come in the finals. How the breakdown will affect these southpaws. The oil breakdown is the TV lights and all the bowling from the southpaw side. Really work their way into this match. A little high there, didn't like it. Avoids a split, 6-10 up. And again, can't overemphasize this enough. He just said himself, wow, the ball's really peeling off the edge of the gutter. The reason why is he's going through something he's never experienced before because of four left-handers on the telecast today. That's where Patrick Allen's experience is going to come into play in the title match. Best prior appearance for Peter Hernandez last year at the V Open in Orlando, won by Chris Hayden, another left-hander. It was on the same sort of surface with the newer synthetic approach in lanes, and it was on pattern E. Pattern E, a lot of friction, short pattern. And the one thing that Peter Hernandez is having trouble with is accepting the fact that he just has to make a big move. Eric Forkel. Was a little bit stubborn and making his adjustments with all the lefties on the show. Now Hernandez finding a groove. So a 39 pin lead for Mika. Yeah, and the best Peter Hernandez can do right now is 228. If Mika were to spare strike all the way out, he would be shooting 227. A strike here, Mika will be in the 230s. He's only missed once in a game and a half. For a four bagger. Oh, 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 <laughs> Got just that. Case sta in finish means hold, hurry up is get a kia. And while we're on the language thing, let's say happy birthday to his little daughter back home. Huva Suntama Peva. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I think that's pretty <laughs> close. Oh, wow. That's happy birthday and finish. That was tremendous. Some of the other bowlers who have finished in the top 32, the best of seven, including the great Mike Alby, left-hander, and his farewell tour. Park the ball third, two. He's not one. We saw him on a show. There's a Joe Chacone. Works in the truck trying to make a show. First time in his career. We wish him the best. A lot of guys are going to take some time off after this event. You're up for the second half of the season. And this match is all but over. Mika Koivu Niemi going at 247 pace. Peter Hernandez is yet to strike on this lane. There's one. I know I can strike on that lane. <laughs> As if he was reading our minds. And we see it week in and week out with guys that are making telecasts for their first time. It's a whole new ball game out here. 
you know, you go through the qualifying rounds, you go through match play, but once you get to TV day, it's a whole new experience. He told us that he's going to get as much advice as possible, sort of glean some information off other bowlers like yourself about being on TV. You've been on so many times. And Doug Kent, one of his close friends on tour. But until you've been there, as we've learned with so many TV rookies, it can be a very difficult experience the first time around. And those first six frames proved costly. Yeah, couldn't figure out that right lane soon enough. He's going to probably strike out, shoot 228. Mika, if he strikes out, is going to shoot 277. And be 20, if he does, he'll be 23 out of 24 strikes. You heard him say that, just couldn't figure out that right lane soon enough. He thought he made the right adjustments, as I'm sure Forkel did as well. But you've got to be quick oh, and look oh, ahead. Oh, I'm going next ball. week, too. Wow, I talked about it earlier. The only person standing in the way is Peter Hernandez. Yes, I'm bowling next week too. He wants to go to the TOC. Well, he's in. Peter Hernandez was the last guy standing in his way. He's disposed of him. Remember what Mika told us last night? He said to Dave and I, I am left-hander's nightmare. <laughs> Great right hope, I believe wow. you said. Well, it's been incredible today without question. That's how we get to the next one, Terry and Jeff. He's right there. And I guarantee you, Pat oh, Cowan, be ready for me next week. Couch, be ready for me next That's week. That's another challenge <laughs> to his friend Jason Couch. They are buddies, folks. We saw that last night, but they bowl each other in the round of eight. They bowl each other today. They're all trying to get to the Dexter Tournament of Champions just down the road at the Mohegan Sun. Oh, Casino yeah. Resort in Uncasville. Get that exclusive 32-man field, $100,000 to the winner. As Jason Couch tries to make more history next week to become the first ever player to win four in a row. He's won three straight TOCs. Right now, Mika's thinking about his third final of this season. Oh. And what right else his first victory. What a day for Corbin Nemi. The lone non-strike frame, the third for him in this semifinal match. You can bet Patrick Allen's been watching. He knows what kind of adjustments to make. I expect nothing short of a strike fest for the title match. Folks, do not go anywhere. We've got a great final coming up for you. Patrick Allen, who's trying to become the first two-time winner on tour this year. Mika Koivu Nemi. <laughs> against the number one bowler in the world right now and Patrick Allen and who can argue anyone is better than Mika at this moment from the right side. So strong last night in the round all the way through match play in the qualifying and the roll continues. Maybe it's the snow, it feels at home like he's back home in Europe and Finland. When we return, the Guy Federer Championship recap. Again, we'll relive history as Mika Kordunemi had his 300 game. On route to the final with P.A. Mika Patrick. Bradley Ball, Windsor Rocks, Connecticut, just outside Hunter. And an exciting final with Tom Mika, Cody Nemi, and Patrick Allen. And tonight, hard running Stephen Davis leading the division leading Carolina Panthers against Atlanta. And yes, Michael Vick will start. First start of this 2003 season for him. It all starts with NFL Five Time presented by Miller Light at 7.30 Eastern Time. Also available in stunning high definition on ESPN HD. Tonight on ESPN. Let's check in now with our Geico Direct Championship recap and of course a 300 game will hit you today, Randy. Well, it, our wild card match, if you missed it, you missed perfection. Nika Koivuniemi shoots 300. Oh, that's oh. Match. Great job. Oh. And in semifinal number one, it was Patrick Allen defeating Eric Forkel by the score of 236 to 183. Eric Forkel never got lined up. A lot of transition on the left side. And as you just saw in semifinal number two, it was Mika Koivuniemi defeating Peter Hernandez by the score of 277 to 206. Good luck, man. 11 Good luck. out of 12 strikes for Mika, no chance for Peter Hernandez. Our Got Go Direct Championship recap. Mika Koivuniemi has just faced Patrick Allen among the five here head to head in Chicago. Last week in West Babylon, Long Island at the PBA Geico Open, Patrick Healy Jr. would strike in five of the six first frames of the championship match. 
en route to beating yeah. Ryan Schaefer. Schaefer was looking for back-to-back -back PBA titles after winning in Albany, but Healy had the day to remember his second career PBA title, earning exemption for next year. His other championship came at last year's Greater Kansas City Classic. Patrick Allen, is there any way to put a stop to the Mika train? He's rolling right now. Hey, I mean, 300, 260, whatever. I mean, you know, my ball reaction's okay, but I'm gonna need some breaks. Good luck to you. Mika, very emotional. We saw some shouts to the camera, a little challenge to Jason Couch for next week at the TOC. Why so emotional for you? It's a bit out of your character. Uh, it's a big week for me. I really like to make the TLC, and when I came here, well, my goal was to win this tournament, so getting close. Randy's almost there. He's already won this event, or a chance to get to the TLC now. He's there, and now on the verge of maybe another championship for Mika Koivunen. Let's go back to you. Big money. 2004 is the winner. 10,000 for the runner-up. And the all-important points. 25,000 for first. Although with a win, guarantee your spot for next year's all-exempt field. Right now, Mika Koibu Niemi is averaging a stout 288 for his two games on TV. <laughs> Continues to stay hot. Almost perfect. Through two plus games now. Chance for history for Mika Putin, and we'll talk about as well. Patrick Gallen has his own idea. How about history? Randy meeting up to the big of the matchup. Almost 10 pins a game higher in average for Mika. Pretty easy to see when you throw 23 out of the last 24 strikes. Special thanks to Chuck and Gordon, Education Manager, Operations Manager for Cambridge Credit Counseling. Those two and their staff done a great job with us all week. The company is involved in many things, a lot of great bowlers that are involved in that company. Their mission is to heighten the awareness of financial education, which is desperately needed in our country. He said to us in the interview, he's gotta get some breaks and be perfect. Well, he knows what he needed to do coming into this match. And that's to do a lot of that because you know Mika's going to do that. He's the only guy on the right side of the lane. His side has not changed a whole lot in the two games that he's bowled. Looking to extend on his big number without an open frame. Oh. 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 Tripping number seven. It just doesn't matter. This is sick. This guy is thrown. 25 out of 27. 25 out of 26, rather. He gets the love tap into the seven pin. No matter what he does, he strikes. He's already brought home all that money. The 300 game in the wild card. He's wrapped up 20,000 more. His second place here, maybe 40,000. <laughs> Time. 26 of 27 strikes for Mika Korbunemi. Major Mika has been magnificent. Well, let's see, $30,000 for the bonus, $300 bonus money, $40,000 for a win. Cambridge Credit Council will only pay the bonus once during a telecast. So if he shoots another 300, it's another 10 grand. Let's see, 80,000. That's just about major money, isn't it's, it? It's almost major money. Tricky ball, perhaps, Patrick Allen. Seven pin. God! Dumbass. CPA still has some of those chicken pock marks. Recent bout with the illness. But obviously feeling just fine. Getting himself to the final. Hello. Hello to his mark. 
Next week, PBA Tour rolling on to the Mohegan Sun in Uncasville, Connecticut. PBA Dexter Tournament of Champions. The action starts at always at 1 o'clock Eastern Time, wrapping up the first half of our season. It's the first major of the year. $100,000 on the line to the winner of this invitational 32-man field. Should be very exciting to watch. And both Patrick Allen and Mika Koivuniemi are in that field. Mika saved himself. He was squarely on the bubble in this one today. Had a chance to be knocked out. He's on the verge of winning the title. But Patrick Allen has other ideas. And we return. Can Mika keep the roll going? He's bidding for a four-bagger, trying to stay nearly perfect. Randy, what could possibly else be the Uniroyal Tire Rock and Roll, but Mika's incredible game in 300 games. Perfect roll, perfect shot, and a perfect way to end the game when you have the front 11. Just throw the 12th one. Mika has thrown 26 out of the last 27 strikes. Scorching hot. His average over 280 right now, correct? He's 288. Got 288. He's got a chance to set the all time TV three game average. Currently held by Bob Learn Jr., 274, Erie, Pennsylvania. And unfortunately, you know all about Bob Learn's effort that day. Yeah, because he beat me for the title. But uh, that was a memorable, memorable day because Bob Learn also had 300 on the telecast. Back in 1996. Right no now. Question, Mika will never forget this day. Right now, Mika with a front four. Perfect. 11 pin lead, or 21 pin lead, can extend to 31 with a strike here. And right now, Mika Koivuniemi is hotter than Georgia Asphalt. And that's hot. In August? In August. Really hot in August. Look at the loft, keep the ball on line, just a little bit to the right. You can see the ball actually making streaks on the lane. Great lane level look there, guys, from our crew. Producer Mike Roth, director Scott Katz, our entire crew, braving the elements to get here. Thanks to all who went the extra mile, literally, through a treacherous blizzard. Get to our bowling site near Hartford today. Patrick Allen Owens with a response this afternoon. Keeps it going. And because of the nine spare that Patrick got in the third frame, he switched balls on the right lane. He went to a stronger, more rolling kind of bowling ball because he did leave the week seven. He knows he cannot afford to not strike in another frame. So he's making adjustments perhaps Peter Hernandez and Forkel didn't make from the left side. He's going, he's going all out. I mean, it's all or nothing right now. That's what he told us in the interview. Needed near perfection, which he's had. Yeah. 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 We like it right off the release. He shrinks to 11 pins, 21 with a strike, front six. He can struck 28 of 29 times today. He had that feeling coming in. We had a great shot for a 300 game. Pattern E has been cooperative. History has been made. The thing that can get Mika into trouble is if he gets it to the right too quick. This is the only shot that Mika has not struck on today. See how it gets to almost the one board. And when that happens, ball overhooks. Anything else, Mika has struck on every other ball. 29 out of 30. mentioned the all-time three-game scoring record. 96 Bob Learn Jr. in Erie against our Randy Peterson, unfortunately for Randy, in the final. 15 in a row. And a 
31 pin lead. The most dominant performance I've seen on television in seven years. Wow, really? Since Bob Learn did it in Erie. I mean, this is unbelievable what he's doing. I think the other part about this is the lanes are holding up for Mika. His bar reaction looks the same all three games. <laughs> Hasn't had to make a lot of adjustment. When you strike in 30 of 31 balls, that'll happen. And again, the lone right-hander. I don't think we can emphasize that enough. Nothing wrong with this shot. It's perfect. The only problem is the four goes right around the seven. PA down 32 pins. Remember we talked about it when we showed the lane animation, the secret to winning this week, how guys got through their matches was carrying the corner pins. Mika obviously has figured that part out. Nobody else has. There you go. Takes care of number seven. However, he is in a big hole. Mika has the front seven bidding for a second 300 game of this show. Talk about drama coming up here. Mika Koivunemi from Tampere, Finland. Now lives in Ann Arbor, Michigan with his wife and two little girls. We saw him live in Chicago for the first time. They made the long drive from Ann Arbor that morning. Couldn't make it out here because of the blizzard. They're watching closely on TV now, that's for sure. Another big shot for PA. He's still alive, he's still in it, but he needs some help from Mika. And the only help he's going to get would be bad carry because I don't think Mika will miss the pocket. He's hoping right now Mika leaves a ring and 10, a solid eight, some type of tap, pocket tap. It's his only chance. Koivu Nemi had 16 straight strikes. Paul Kaler has that record on TV, 16 in a row. More history on the line. Mika oh, Koivu Nemi. The seven stays up. And the fans acknowledge an unbelievable effort for Corbin Emmett. This is just a pinch further right. It comes in a little late and does not get the good break of throwing the messenger into the, into the uh, seven pin. And from that angle, it's hard to believe that ball doesn't strike. What's that, a spare? <laughs> that is a spare, his second one of the day. Ties the straight strike record for TV show with Paul Kaler, our former associate on our ESPN broadcast. A lot of things can still happen. Patrick Allen is still in this match. Mika can close the door with strikes of the 9th and 10. He's calling for the ball to hold. Kesta in finish. And it did just that. And that's a big hit there in the ninth frame because what it does is it keeps him one pin ahead in count over Patrick Allen. So if Mika were to go spare strike in the 10th frame, he would shoot 259. The best Patrick Allen can shoot is 258. So minor blemishes for Mika only on that right lane of the TV pair. Perfect on the left. Unbelievable. <laughs> See the max numbers for each. Foundation frame. Next up. We're coming to you from Bradley Bowl, just outside Hartford, Connecticut. In fact, right next to Bradley International Airport, Windsor Locks, Connecticut. Dave Ryan, Randy Peters, and our entire crew live coverage. The PBA Tour continues. Sudden death seven ball, Pro Billiards coming up next on ESPN. And you can see just how big that nine spare is for Patrick Allen in the seventh frame. If he strikes there, we're all even. He made a bold change by switching to another ball just for the right lane. He pures the shot, and all he gets for his efforts is a ring in seven pin. Right now, needs to strike out to have any chance. Be a shot clock violation? Well, somebody, he said somebody coughed. No, no shot clock violation. Somebody yeah. disturbed him. So he can just turn back. 25 second shot clock on TV. Which you can see in the bottom right of your screen there next to the monitor. So 
here. You can see it pretty clearly. Side five seconds on this one. Oh. Ten pin. Gonna, the best he's going to shoot is 230s. 237 if he goes strikes fair. This match is over. Mika Koivuniemi is your winner. You saw the reaction a moment ago from Mika. It will be his third career title, first non major victory. And it's pretty emotional behind Patrick Allen from Mika Koivuniemi. Throws a 300. Wins the tournament, gets himself off the bubble for the Dexter Tournament of Champions. Earns automatic exemption for next year, all in one day. Now that's a day. And makes $70,000. <laughs> Unforgettable, certainly for Mika. Patrick Allen bowled about as good as you can bowl. And all he has to show for is 237. He just got mauled by Mika Koivuniemi with three strikes in the 10th frame. He will only have two misses. That's 34 out of 36 strikes on television. First time in his career he's been on the TV three times in one season. He made it all of once last year in the U.S. Open. California, and that was it. He needs a double and five for the record. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Won't get that, but by blistering the rock time and time again, Remember, he had to bowl the wild card match. Had his 300 game. Wrapped up this title, third of his career. What a birthday party that's going to be right now near Ann Arbor, Michigan for the family. Little Lydia just turned three years old on Thursday. There's a lot of pizza and Thank you, everyone, Hoppy. lemonade to pass around right now, isn't there? They're having a big party right now in Ann Arbor. <laughs> wow. And happy birthday, you, Lydia. I hope you have fun. You better believe it, Dad. Oh, yeah, oh, great time. Yeah. Yeah. Today's exclusive live coverage of the PBA Cambridge Credit Classic is brought to you by Cambridge Credit Counseling. Log on to nodebt.com and find out how good it feels to be debt free. By the official candy bar of the PBA, Baby Ruth from Nestle, the real deal. And by Uniroyal, the official tire of the PBA Tour. Uniroyal tires trusted by American families since 1892. He's got 400 damage, 300 game, $70,000. A bid to the Dexter Tournament of Champions. Exemption for next year. Could this have been a better day in your wildest dreams? No, I think I never can understand like, what I did today, but I, gonna, I think it hit me after a couple of minutes. Why did you have such a good look all day long? I don't know. It stays really good, my look. In my matches, my spots burn more, but it's going to burn today. So, And I keep lofting, and it looks good. Enjoy the moment. Congratulations. Thank you. What a day, what a moment. History for Mika Korbunemi. This afternoon, near Hartford, Connecticut, as he takes the championship. Be sure to join us next week. It's the Dexter Tournament of Champions from Uncasville, Connecticut. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on ESPN.com. For the entire crew, my partner, Randy Hughes, and Dave Ryan, saying so long. Remind you, Sunday, 7th of all, is next. One-day day for me.